Potts, 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 Potts. And more Potts. Don't ask me, I must be nuts. Because this pot melt bowl design is just a little potty. I hope you're well out there. My name is Jeff. Welcome to the channel. And in this video, I have a fuse glass project for you that will test you, but in the end, you'll love the result. And yes, the design is a little putty. By that, I mean it's just a little strange. And it is going to take a bit of time to put together. So um, hang in there. I'm sure you can do it. The technique is not that difficult. Um, and the end result is quite interesting. It's one way of putting it. Um, anyway, this is using, for the feature, a pot melt I did a little while ago using a stainless steel bowl. Um, it's not really a bowl, but it's something that uh, looks a little bowlish. Let's put it that way. Now, the method of construction that I'm going to use in this is strip construction. As I said, it is tedious. It takes some time to put together, but uh, the end result usually looks really good. And I'm sure you'll like the end result of this one. So stick around. I hope you enjoy the video and you find it informative. And um, if you do, please subscribe. I'd appreciate that. So first thing, let's get into the design, the materials and the equipment. Okay, first thing is the design. What is this? Well, have a look at this little diagram here and that'll give you an idea. I'm going to take this and I'm going to use strip construction and I'm going to lay up strips radially out from the central piece here. They are going to be made up of uh, varying colours and alternated colours around here. I'm going to bring some out to the, uh, this rough line here and then on the, in, on the middle here I'm going to alternate these two colours and on the outside I'm going to add in some white as well to try and add a bit of a white border around the whole thing. And these here are to try and make this a lot more interesting in the middle. Though it doesn't need a lot of help with this feature here. This is all then going to be slumped in a mould and you can see the shape right there. Now this is the mould here actually. I'll just show it to you. Very large. It's about 300 on each side. Um, shallow, not real deep, but it should make a really nice piece. Now the materials will be this feature piece, which I made in a mesh melt, and there is a video about making this um, on the channel. I'll try and remember to put a card up there and a link in the description. So that's our feature. Then we're going to use um, uh, the light aqua here, which is uh, 1408. Remember these are all bullseye. COE90. This is turquoise blue, which is 1116. This is salmon pink, 0305. And this is opaque white, 0013. The other things we'll need, of course, are thin fire paper, which will go down on the shelf. And I'm going to be spraying the mould with boron nitride. As far as equipment is concerned, you'll obviously need your normal equipment, such as your glass cutter and so forth but you'll also need a mould of your choice um, and I expect to have to clean it up and do some cold work on the edges so you'll need some way of doing that. I'll be using my flat lap, I expect, um, and I may even have to do some sandblasting. Now, like all my designs, um, it's a little fluid. I often change things as I'm working because once you start putting glass in place and looking at things, they don't necessarily look right and you will make changes along the way. I actually half expect I will with this one. Don't forget the schedules will be um, in the video description, not on our website. And they are for COE 90, so you may have to change them for whatever COE you're using. Now, as far as cutting is concerned, I'm not going to um, touch the feature at all. I'm going to leave it exactly as it is, odd shape and all. But I am going to have to cut a lot of uh, little 6mm wide strips to do all of this work here. And um, I'll cut some now, but I will basically be cutting as I go along because I don't know exactly how many I'm going to need. So I'll cut some, do some work, cut some more, do some more work. And I'll try to video this so that you can see me as I 
slowly assemble all of this. And I expect that's going to take some time. I will be assembling it on thin fire paper on the shelf. So you can see the design. This is a bit like the other one I showed you, but this, this is actually on thin fire paper. Um, what I've done is um, just taken the pencils, sketched out the shape of the mould, um, put the main feature in the middle, taken some radial lines out. You can see there I am going to lay up strips parallel to that line, which means once we get over here, they'll be on angles. Um, and these lines here a rough guide for me where I'm going to cut small bits of the salmon pink and uh, alternate it with um, pieces of the um, uh, transparent and try and build up a sort of an irregular um, shape around the central piece and on the outside here is just going to be white but it's going to be in a regular shape as well so I'm ready to go Basically, it's going to take a while, but I will show you as it progresses around. Um, and basically, the process from here is, is mark it, cut it, put it in place, cut the next piece, put it in place, and so on, and so on, and so on. Right now I'm starting to get a little nervous. If you have a look at this closely, you can see there's a slight tone difference between these uh, sheets of glass. This is one I finished off. This is a new one I've started cutting. That is the only sheet of the salmon pink that I have left. So I am feeling a little nervous that we are going to end up with a tone difference for the rest of this. If we do, not going to be a happy chap.
done. Finally, it's been about two weeks um, since I started this and it's just been a slow progress of cutting, fitting, cutting, fitting, more cutting, more fitting and so forth. Um, you can see the process. You've uh, been able to watch it as it happened. Now, the only issue I've had is with the white. Unfortunately, it varied a lot in thickness. In some places in the sheets, it's quite thin. So things didn't fit together in the white quite that well. But that shouldn't be a problem because when it all melts down, all those little gaps will be filled up. So now it's just into the kiln. We'll do a full fuse until it's all flat. And hopefully we've got a nice piece. I have fused it and this is the end result and I'm quite happy with this there's a couple of little things that aren't quite as I would have liked one of them is these odd bits of um, color in here so something surfaced there that um, I didn't expect um, the solid color around here I'm not a hundred percent happy with but I don't know what else I can do with it at this stage. Obviously, I could sprinkle something around on it and refuse it and do that. But by doing that, I'm a little concerned that what I'll do is just make it worse. So in other words, it'll look like it was added on, which it was. So I think I've just got to leave it as it is, um, which is what I was originally going to do anyway. Um, what are the other things? There's not a lot else. I mean, I'm pretty happy with it. Some of the joins, I'll get it up here. I think you can see that. Where the, um, uh, these strips here butted onto this, uh, uh, turquoise one here, you can see the joins. Not that that's unexpected, but, uh, maybe I should have put a line, a white line down here. Nah, nah, leave it as it is. So, all in all, it's pretty good, especially like the um, shadow line along here, and you do get it with the with the um, pink here. So I particularly like the shadow line. I like the contrast between these two transparent colours with the white. Just not sure about that one. Too late now. It's done. So, a lot of coal working to do. Um, I've got to do. Uh, some sandblasting. I want to straighten out. Well, not straighten out. These have got to all fit the mould. Um, so there's quite a bit of coal working before I get it ready for the mould. I do remember what I did that caused those couple of little odd coloured spots. Basically, I had taken a couple of chips of the salmon pink and put them there because there's a bit of a gap there that I thought, no, I'll put them there to fill it up. For some reason or other, they've come out a different colour. But, you know, this glass tends to do that. You get little shades of colour. They're not absolutely perfect. So uh, we're going to have to live with that one. Now, as this is part one, in the next video, I have a fair bit of coal working to do. First thing I have to do is I'll use my ring saw over there to cut the shape to suit the mould. Then I'll be on the flat lap to uh, clean that shape up and refine it even further. Then I'll do some sandblasting to get rid of all the divot off of it before we do a final fire polish and a slump. Now part two isn't that far away, I hope, um, because I'm also going to be working on that one that you voted on as well. If you've got any comments, don't forget, put them in the comments section, any questions in there as well, and I will do my best to answer them. 
Now, if you like the videos I've been doing and you are interested in becoming a member, there is a list of uh, member-only videos up there, a button to find out some more information. Down here, we've got a suggested video just for you, as well as a subscribe button. And that's it for this one, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.